Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I know a lot of you use these videos to sleep or relax, so before you drift off, I thought it would be a fun idea. If everyone can leave a comment to let me know where you are listening from. Also like and subscribe if you are enjoying the episodes, let's get comfy and relaxed and let's begin. Alone in the Woods, a hiking horror story. There's something about the wilderness that draws people in the serenity the beauty, the escape from the chaos of everyday life. But it can also be a place of deep isolation, where the only sounds are your own footsteps and the distant calls of animals. Sometimes that isolation can turn dangerous. This is my story of a hiking trip that went terribly wrong, when I realized I wasn't as alone as I thought. I'd been planning this trip for months. Hiking was my way of escaping the city, of clearing my mind and finding some peace. I'd chosen a remote trail in a national park I'd never been to before, a place far enough from civilization that I knew I wouldn't run into many other hikers. That was part of the appeal, just me, the trees, and miles of unspoiled nature. The first day went exactly as planned. I set out early, the air crisp and cool, the morning fog still clinging to the trees. The trail was more rugged than I expected, winding through dense forest and over rocky terrain. But I was prepared. I had my map, compass, and plenty of supplies. Everything felt right. By the time evening rolled around, I'd made good progress. I set up camp in a small clearing, far off the beaten path. As I sat by my fire, the sky darkened and the sounds of the forest changed. The chirping of birds gave way to the rustle of leaves and the occasional crack of branches. I reminded myself that it was just the wind or maybe a deer passing through, but there was an uneasiness in the air that I couldn't shake. As I lay in my tent that night, the forest seemed to come alive. Every rustle, every snap of a twig seemed louder, closer. I told myself it was just my mind playing tricks on me, that I was safe that there was no one out here but me. But then, I heard it as sound that didn't belong. Footsteps. At first, they were faint, distant, like someone walking through the underbrush a few hundred feet away. I sat up, straining to hear. Maybe it was just an animal, I thought. But then the steps grew louder, more deliberate. They were slow, almost methodical, as if someone or something was moving through the woods trying not to be heard. My heart pounded in my chest as I listened, frozen in place. The footsteps stopped suddenly and the forest was silent again. I waited for what felt like hours, barely daring to breathe, but I didn't hear anything else that night. The next morning, I convinced myself it had been nothing. Maybe a deer or my mind playing tricks on me. I packed up camp and continued on the trail trying to shake the uneasy feeling that clung to me like a shadow. But as the day wore on, the feeling grew stronger. I couldn't shake the sensation that I was being watched. The trail led me deeper into the woods, where the trees grew closer together and the path became harder to follow. Every now and then, I thought I caught movement out of the corner of my eye a flash of something dark moving between the trees. But every time I turned to look, there was nothing there. I told myself it was just paranoia. I was tired after all. The trail was tough, and I hadn't slept well the night before. But as the sun began to set, I found myself growing more and more anxious. The last stretch of the trail before my next campsite was the most isolated, a narrow path that wound through a dense forest with thick underbrush on either side. It was the kind of place where it would be easy to hide where someone or something could be watching you without you ever knowing. I pushed forward, eager to reach my campsite before dark. But as I rounded a bend in the trail, I saw something that stopped me in my tracks. There, in the middle of the path, was a small pile of stones, carefully stacked one on top of the other. It was the kind of thing hikers sometimes leave as a marker, but this one felt wrong, out of place. I hadn't seen any sign of other hikers all day, and the stones hadn't been there when I passed this way the day before. A chill ran down my spine. I looked around, scanning the trees for any sign of movement, but the forest was still. Too still. 
the usual sounds of birds and insects were gone, replaced by an eerie silence. I didn't want to stay there any longer than I had to. I hurried past the stone pile and continued down the trail, my heart racing. But no matter how fast I walked, the feeling of being watched only grew stronger. By the time I reached my campsite, the sun had dipped below the horizon, and the shadows of the trees stretched long and dark across the forest floor. I set up camp quickly, barely taking the time to eat before retreating to my tent. I lay there, listening to the forest around me, every creak and rustle setting my nerves on edge. I didn't light a fire that night. I didn't want to draw any attention to myself. As I lay there in the dark, I heard it again, the footsteps. They were closer this time, just beyond the tree line. I held my breath, listening as they grew louder, more deliberate. Whoever or whatever was out there, they weren't trying to hide anymore. Suddenly, the footsteps stopped and the forest fell silent again. But I knew they were still out there, watching me, waiting. I didn't sleep at all that night. The next morning, I packed up camp and set off at first light, determined to get out of the woods as quickly as possible. But no matter how fast I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed. Every now and then, I would hear a branch snap or the rustle of leaves behind me. But every time I turned to look, the trail was empty. As the day wore on, the trail grew more difficult to follow. The trees seemed to close in around me, and the path became less distinct. I checked my map, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to find my way. It was as if the forest itself was conspiring to keep me there. Panic set in as the sun began to sink lower in the sky. I was lost, and I knew it. Worse, I wasn't alone. The footsteps had returned, closer than ever, and this time I knew they weren't just in my head. I broke into a run, crashing through the underbrush, desperate to find my way out. But no matter how fast I ran, the footsteps followed, always just a few paces behind. I could feel eyes on me, hear the ragged breath of something, or someone pursuing me through the trees. And then, just as the sun dipped below the horizon, I burst out of the forest and onto a dirt road. My car was parked just a few hundred feet away and I sprinted toward it, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't look back. I didn't want to know what was following me. As I sped away, I glanced in my rearview mirror and saw something standing at the edge of the forest watching me. It was tall, dark, and its eyes gleamed in the fading light. I drove faster, desperate to put as much distance between myself and that thing as possible. I don't go hiking anymore. I don't even go near the woods because I know, deep down, that whatever was out there is still waiting, watching, for me to return. This is the story of my last hiking trip. The wilderness isn't always the peaceful escape we imagine it to be. Sometimes it hides things that are better left undiscovered.